government committees. Being self-educated for much of his professional skills, he uses every trick at his disposal. And we've seen some. One of those he will be speaking on tonight, vocal variety. Folks, we're very lucky as human beings to live in a world that is immersed in sound, both natural and artificial. They all add to the understanding, experience, and, and just general day-to-day -day life of, as we live it. <clears throat> natural or artificial. <laughs> natural or artificial, all these sounds do add to our experience in day-to-day -day life. Human beings are the only creatures known to create tools for sound, or more specifically, for music. Now we create some of those tools which are very simple. Uh, some as simple as simply blowing across the mouth of a whiskey jug. Some can be very complex, such as the Indian percussion instrument called a tabla. However, there's one instrument that is the most complex. And it doesn't matter how many orchestras you attend, or how many music stores you peruse. There will always remain one instrument that is the most complex of all, which is the human voice. Now it is the most complex because of our larynx, our voice box. Our voice box, each and every one of ours, is so unique, and the combination of pitch, tone, volume, inflection, creates literally an infinite number of possibilities to use our voice for. Now this is most evident, especially in singing. It makes the human voice out an amazing instrument creating song. However, I'm not here to talk to you about singing, primarily because that would involve an example, and since I have no singing skills whatsoever, that would involve all of you throwing large, heavy objects at high velocity. So I'm here to talk to you about communication, or more specifically, how we communicate, how we use our voices to communicate and get our message across. Now our voices, our mastery of, or lack of mastery of, is what causes quite often a lot of anger, misunderstanding, and sometimes even bloodshed. For example, when people think of a word, they think of the dictionary definition of a word. When it's a proper name, you think of a, a name or a place, or perhaps even, uh, in the case of an introduction, a label for the content that is about to follow, right? So a name is just a name. Now, <clears throat> if I do this, Hold it up for all of you to see. Just a name, right? Angie. That's all it is, just a name. I could write it five times. It would mean the same thing, right? Well, if I get rid of this piece of paper and say it, I'd like you to pay attention not just to what I'm saying, but how the listener would perceive what I'm saying. Angie. Angie. Angie! Angie. Four names, same word, four times in a row. They all mean the same, right? Obviously not. Those were four very, very different messages. Now, of course, using it with the name of a, of a person you know or a loved one or a child is this trivial. We do that every day. What about when you do it with a message? For example, when you come home at the end of a long day, and a, a common message a lot of us ask our spouse or our partner when we walk in is, is the dishes done? And again, written on paper, write it a million times, it's the same question over and over again. How you say that question, though, really can dictate whether you sleep on the couch or the bed <laughs> at the end of the day. So, are the dishes done? Are the dishes done? The dish is done. Are the dish done? There, again, four identical phrases, but four very, very different meanings. One, a simple question. The second, an angry demand. The third, a sarcastic dismissal with the obvious assumption that they were not done. And the fourth, very pleased amazement that the dishes actually were done. Same four words in the same order, four 
very distinctly different messages. Now, of course, some people will dismiss that and say, oh, well, you know, let's just stop home. You know, who cares about that? Well, change the domestic to the corporate. Change, are the dishes done to, is that report finished yet? Now you can see where use of your voice and vocal variety can not only dictate how you interact with your colleagues and your fellow workers, but even your very chances for promotion and advancement in your career. And a lot of people don't understand that what they think that they're saying and how they say it are two very, very different things. For example, one of the most common mistakes that people make is called the school teacher syndrome. And very simply, this is, and ironically, starting from low to high or starting from high to low. So for example, that's a very nice car. It's kind of dismissive, sarcastic. Yeah, nice car, buddy. That's a nice car! Same words, very different message. Or, would you like a day off, Angie? Sarcastic, patronizing, demeaning. Poor Angie can't handle the big tough work. Bro. We'll just give her a day off and let the big boys handle the work. Angie, would you like a day off? Again, same words, same message, right? Wrong. And you worked hard, she's being rewarded. Simply, and you can tell that simply in my voice. Now this has been just a very, very light touching on vocal variety. We can obviously go much farther and very deep, but I hope it will give you thought into how using your voice can dramatically change the message that you deliver. I don't know.